Hi everyone, welcome back to Custom Breeze, where filling out your customs form is easy breezy and can be done in the comfort of your own home. Today, we're going to focus on Japan's customs declaration of accompanied articles and unaccompanied articles form. The official form is called C5360B, Customs Declaration Form. So as you can see, I am already on the Customs Breeze website. And we are going to go into the Japan section. I already pulled up Japan. So um, just for your information, if you wanted to find Japan, you click on this area here where the triangle is to the far right. And you just scroll and see where your destination is. And here we go, Japan. So I have Japan here. The next step <coughs> is to click search. And the search has pulled me into the Japan section. Now, guys, I really want you to peruse uh, this section, okay? Um, peruse the Japan section, not just for the form, but in this particular Japan section, there are other things that pertain, important things that pertain to what you need, not only about the forms, but what to expect when you enter Japan. Um, so, you know, give yourself some time to look through that. It'll be worth your while. But for us now, we're just going to go to the form. So I'm here. I'm in the section. Now I'm going to press, uh, uh, click in this area where it says custom declaration form C5360B. That's where we want to be. So I'm going to click this area now. And it pulls me up into a choice of what I want to do with <clears throat> and how I want to fill and view the form. So for our purposes, we want to go to the fill form online. So let me press this area. And it brings me to the customs declaration form. Okay, guys, this form is in two sections. I'm just going to scroll very quickly and then we're going to start from the top. So we have this section. And then we have the other side. So with most of these forms, you have to make sure that you look at both sides. Um, you know, just when you fill out one side, you think, oh, I'm done. Great. And then you turn around and you look on the other side and you're like, oh man, I have more to fill out. So make sure that you look on both sides to make sure that you leave nothing unchecked, unsigned, or not filled out. Okay. So let's get to it. Let's fill out this form together. Okay. So again, this is called customs form C5360B. Okay. So the first step is they ask you, please fill in the following information and submit to customs. Okay. This next line is important. Only one written declaration per family is required. So only one written declaration per family is required. So that means if you're coming with a bunch of family members, and so you have your children, you know, and your mom and dad, and, you know, uh, and you're trying to figure out, oh, do we all have to fill out the forms? No, just one member of the family fills out the form and it will cover everyone in the family. Okay, next line. What's your flight number? Well, you will get your flight number from your ticket. Your ticket will tell you what flight number you're on. Okay, so you put your flight number here. The next one is point of embarkment. So guys, embarkment means boarding. So where are you boarding? That's what embarkment means. So um, you put that information right there. Next line, date of arrival in Japan. When are you getting, when are you, when are you arriving in Japan? When are you getting off that plane and, and, and stepping foot on Japan? So give them the year, give them the month 
and give them the day. Once again, guys, it's very important that you fill out all areas on this form back and front. Don't leave anything unfilled out because it'll become a headache later on. So when in doubt, fill it out. Okay, the next line, your name, last name, surname, you put in this box. The next box, first name and middle name in this box. Next, we have address in Japan. Where, you're, where are you laying your head? Where are you going to be staying in Japan? Will it be at friends? Will it be at a hotel? Will it be at an Airbnb? Wherever you are going to be staying in Japan, they need the address. So put the address in this box, right in here. Next is a telephone number. What's a telephone number in the place that you'll be staying? They want that information, so make sure you put the information that they need in this area for for the telephone, okay? In the three, three box areas. Okay, the next one is nationality. What's your nationality? Put it in this box. Next is occupation. Um, what do you, you know, when you work, what's your title? You know, what is it you do? That's what they want in this section. Next, date of birth. Put your year, your month, and your day. And uh, make sure you fill that out correctly. And the reason why I say this is, if you're from America, usually it's, it's usually the month, and then it's the day, and then it's the year. So look at this carefully. They're asking for the year first, then the month, and then the day last. So make sure you look at this area carefully, especially if you're from the United States. Okay, passport area, passport number. In this area, make sure you fill out the right numbers of your passport number. Make sure you do that correctly. Make sure you check and double check. Okay, the next section is also a section you have to look at carefully because they're asking you specifically for each box the age range. So don't just put any number in any box. They're asking you in the first box, you know, the number of family members traveling with you. And they're asking those over 20 years old, you put in this box, the first box. Those that are uh, between six and 19, you put in the second box. Those that are under six years old, you put in the third box. Very important that you pay attention to that. Okay, now we're gonna go to the next section. Now in this section, they're asking, please answer with a check mark to the following questions. So if they're asking a check mark, put a check mark. Don't fill it in, don't put an X, put a check. That's what they're asking. So the first question is, are you bringing the following into Japan? And they, they're very specific as to what they want you uh, uh, to fill in yes or no for. So the first one, narcotics, drugs, firearms, explosives, and other prohibited items. And, you know, guys, this is something that is very common on most customs forms. They're always asking whether you are bringing in prohibited items. They will always ask that. So make sure that you answer yes or no. The same thing goes for, you know, they're asking for the second one, meat products, vegetables, fruits, animals, plants, and other restricted items. You know, fill out yes or no, whatever pertains to your situation. Number three, gold bullion and products of gold. Hey, if you have it, <laughs> make sure you declare it. Also, um, as a note, when it says the gold bullion, uh, it's best that you refer to the Visit Japan web site, uh, the VJ, VJW site, because they will give you the specifics. 
And also Custom Breeds gives you uh, specifics on what you need to know about that. Because for the gold bullion, they also ask amount in kilograms. So it's not just, you know, any gold bullion, you know, you, you have like a coin or whatever. No, if you, if you have X amount in kilograms or worth, then that's what they want you to declare. So uh, you're going to have to do a little bit more research as far as question number three goes. Okay. Um, number four, goods, you know, those purchase souvenirs or gifts exceeding duty-free allowance. And that's another thing you have to look at specifically what the duty-free allowance is. Uh, number five, commercial goods and samples. Same thing, yes or no, if you have, if you don't. Uh, number six, any items you have been requested, uh, uh, you have been requested from someone else to bring into Japan. These include bags such as suitcases and similar containers and the items that someone else gave you without letting you know the reason. Hmm. So that is one you need to really think about. Uh, it happens and it happens innocently, but uh, that's something that you have to declare yes or no. <clears throat> okay. Um, you see where the asterisk is, the star symbol. Um, and it says, if your answer to any of the questions above is yes, please list your belongings in description of accompanied articles on side B. So already, you know, that you have to make a list of your things and there's a side B to this. So, um, very important that you take note of that. Okay. Next cash. Number two, cash checks. This is very important because once again, it's about amount, right? It's about, it's about the number, the amount of money in yen or equivalent and what you've, the amount you've exceeded. So for them, that's what they want you to declare. If it's something below a certain amount, you don't need to declare it. But what they're asking right here, they're, they're giving you a specific number. If it's that number and above, you have to declare it. Okay. So number three, it says, do you have unaccompanied articles? So let's read what that is. So if you have unaccompanied articles, please submit this declaration form in duplicate. Unaccompanied articles shall be imported within six months from the date of your arrival. The sealed declaration must be presented at the time of clearance of the unaccompanied articles. So again, everyone, you have to go to the Japan site and you can also look on this site to find out what those details are, what they mean, how it pertains to you. But uh, don't brush this off. Make sure you look and see what it is that your unaccompanied articles are. Okay. And of course they ask that you do the declaration form in duplicate. That means each <clears throat> Each uh, item, you 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 have to have a separate uh, separate declaration for it. Okay, next section. Um, here it says notice, as regulated by laws and regulations concerned, you are required to declare all the articles that you have purchased abroad or in departures, arrivals, duty free shops in Japan, and are bringing into Japan any false declaration or failure to declare may be subject to penalty in laws and regulations concerned. Translation, don't screw around. If you have something, declare it. Don't just act as if, oh, you know, it's nothing. I, I don't need to declare it. 
if you need to declare it, put it down because if they catch you, it's not going to be cute. Okay. So the next section. Um, and also read this, I declare that the above particles, uh, particulars, excuse me, the above particulars are true and correct. And then you put your signature. Okay. All right. Now we're into the second part, B. This is the flip side. And the flip side is asking you descriptions of accompanied articles. Now you're going to get the breakdown of accompanied articles prohibited articles, restricted articles, duty-free allowance. So they're, they're asking you for a breakdown of things. So look at this, air, uh, this area very, very carefully because it's specific. Okay. So description of accompanied articles. If you choose no to all the questions of one and three on side A, you are not required to fill in this section. So for questions one and three on the first side, and if you said no, then you're not required to fill out this section because it doesn't pertain to you. But if you said yes, then you have to give the breakdown. So uh, if you said yes to, you know, if you have alcoholic beverages, how many bottles, how many cigarettes, um, you know, cigars, uh, you know, tobacco products, um, the boxes, pieces, uh, same thing goes for perfume. And by the way, guys, perfume, there's a limited amount that you can, you can take with you, um, you know, take with you and take from Japan. So it's very important that you look at the rules, um, that they have for, for certain items or certain liquid items. Okay. Um, okay. So now we have this section where you break down itemize. Okay. And put down quantity of your items. And this next section one says prohibited articles example, and they give you examples of what prohibited articles are. Okay. So look at this area very, very carefully, very carefully, because, uh, what you may think is not prohibited they may think is prohibited, you know, um, you know, for instance, number six articles, which infringe upon intellectual property rights, patent, utility model, design, trademark, copyright, neighboring, right, etc. Now, if they catch you with any kind of patented, you know, uh, intellectual property, you know, documents that, that don't belong to you, you're going to get in trouble. Uh, same thing goes for number five, obscene or immoral materials or child pornography. Uh, if you have any material like that in your possession, you will get in trouble. So, um, it's very important that you look at this section. Number one, prohibited articles and the examples that they give now restricted articles and their examples. And they give, you know, hunting guns, air guns, swords, uh, international prohibited endangered animal plants and other products. So this is another section that you really need to pay attention to because they have their reasons for listing it. Uh, duty free allowance. Now this is, this section I think is very important because some people can kind of blow this off and think, ah, uh, I just, I just have, I have four bottles. They say you only have three, but you know, who's really counting? They are. <laughs> so make sure that you look at this section and you look at what the requirements are and the restrictions. You know, if they say that you can only bring in three bottles, you can only bring in three bottles. And if you try to bring in four or five and they catch you, well, that's on you, you know, because you were, you were given a heads up of how, how much they, you required. So look at this section very carefully and that's it. So, um, make sure that with any form that you check and double check that you make sure that you have filled in all the areas that you need to fill in and, um, you know, make sure that you put it in the right area, all your answers in the right area. And, uh, you know, you give it to customs, um, you know, where and when it's required. 
Um, and guys, that is it for today. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. And uh, I hope to see you next time. This is Customs Breeze. And our website is customsbreeze.com. That's C-U-S-T-O-M-S Breeze, B-R-E-E-Z-E.com. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much.